people often ask me how I am able to look around so much during gameplay and why the view seems to move much more naturally than you would expect if you were using a mouse to move the camera. Well the reason is thanks to the sponsor of today's video Toby and their incredible eye tracking peripheral the Toby Eye Tracker 5. I've been using a Toby Eye Tracker myself for over a year and I honestly couldn't imagine playing without it anymore. And in this video we are going to take a look at the features of this device and what it can do for you in Star Citizen. The Toby Eye Tracker 5 is a small device that attaches to the lower part of your display. And through Toby's software, the Toby Experience allows you to control aspects of the game with movements of your eyes and your head. There is a small infrared camera on the device that follows the position of your eyes eyes and then translates that into movement of your character's head in game. This means that in games like Star Citizen where you can free look, using eye tracking you can intuitively look around your environment independently of your hand controls just like you would in the real world. This is a real game changer for immersion and situational awareness and as anyone that follows the channel regularly will know, I personally love to make use of eye tracking both crewing a ship and while on foot. In a ship this offers a ton of benefits like being able to intuitively track targets during combat when they are not directly in front of the ship or gives you extra options when surveying a location and its ambience as you make your way in for some exploration. For video makers and content creators the Toby Eye Tracker 5 also allows for camera shots using the external camera that are just impossible with regular controls. The ability to both move the camera while still keeping it focused on a ship or a player has really helped me capture a lot of the cinematic shots here on the channel and the great news is that the iTracker 5 is natively supported by Star Citizen. I was heading out to hit a few bounty targets in the F7A Hornet and it would be a good opportunity to show how useful head tracking is during combat in space. Alright, I'm gonna have to go to menu. Yeah. Johan was with me in Discord but kind of doing his own thing right now. I was heading for Cleo to intercept the mission targets. I am not a very good pilot so having the extra awareness that the Toby Eye Tracker provides is a huge help in combat situations. I'm going to go hit a bounty target with the F7A. Hopefully it's a ship based bounty this time. The last one I went ended up being on foot which was, it was fine but you know not as ideal. It was indeed a ship-based fight, and I'd switch from speaking with Johan to speaking with you, the viewer at home. Ship combat now, and this time, as you can see, I can look up and keep track of where the target is and the direction it's heading as I maneuver into position to engage it. I'm not a great pilot, as anyone who follows the channel will know, I'm a pretty terrible pilot, but extra situational awareness, something like the Toby Eye Tracker gives you is definitely a huge help. But in this first fight, I was having trouble with my weapon pips. I'm not sure why my pip doesn't seem to be. So apparently, it's been so long since I've engaged in ship combat that settings for weapon pips have changed. Instead of a pip for each weapon type, I was getting an average pip that was kind of useless in terms of accuracy. And rather than try to limp through the fight, I decided to pull back and refit the ship with all ballistic weapons. Heading back out, this time for you tip, I was ready for a good fight with my targets. As the enemy and me are trying to get into position to fight, I can keep an eye on where they are in relation to me with ease. Likewise, if the target shoots past you, it is really easy to reacquire them using head tracking and ensure that you are turning in the right direction. Target 
did it. I did it all by myself. I didn't even need a grown up to help. But there's another one. Out of the woods yet. Oh, the um, Hornet. The remaining ship was not part of the mission and staff areas are also surprisingly tanky right now so I'd back off and head home. On another I know I was heading in to investigate yet another bounty target on Calliope this time aboard an old favourite of mine, the Cutlass. It's been a while since I've flown a Cutlass and this one is stock loadout so it'll be interesting to see how we fare in the master modes world of combat. But as I closed in on the target, I realised it was probably someone on foot at a wreck site. Maybe they're on foot? Looks suspiciously like they might be on foot. Yeah, it's wreck, wreck site, okay. So I guess we're going to land the ship and go take a look on foot. Coming in for a landing, you can use the camera to get a better view around the ship. Not not great view from inside the cutlass here, but on a lot of ships there are extra windows down by your feet that let you get a better view as you're landing. I also like to use head tracking while I'm on foot. Some people find it a little bit um, disorienting. I think that um, there is definitely a learning curve to it, but um, if you get used to it, then it really gives you a lot more situational awareness. Maybe there'll be others along the way as well. There's a lot of ships around. Oh, there are targets there. Obviously, they didn't see the flashlight. Slight reduction, maybe, in the rate of fire of the S71 that I wasn't aware of. I don't know. It felt a little bit sticky there, squeezing off the round. There are some aspects of head tracking on foot that I do not use, but everyone's taste will vary. Now, there is the option to turn on head tracking during aim down sights. Uh, I don't recommend this, um, so we'll, we'll give that a go real quick and you can see what that's like. If you use head tracking with aim down sights, your view does not automatically snap to the weapon. When you click the right mouse button, you end up with quite a cool effect on the optic itself, but it is kind of awkward to do. It's kind of cool though, like the effect on the, you can get a really get a sense of that effect on the scope doing it, but but it does make things a bit awkward. Whereas if you disable that, if you turn off head tracking while you aim down sights, your view automatically snaps back to the weapon when you hold the right mouse button, regardless of where you are looking at that moment. There are a whole range of these options for pretty much any situation, using your mobile glass or interaction menu for example, or when you are sitting in a seat as a passenger. I keep most of them on, but having the option to adjust them to your liking and really tailor the experience you want is very cool. So as I'm running around, I'm just using the movements of my head to look for threats and targets. If I ever need to reset the view, if I hit the um, forward slash key on the numpad, it uh, disables and then re-enables, which resets the view back to forward. As I approach the target area, I am still scanning my surroundings with my head. Hidden the voice, maybe closer by. Again, <laughs> you know, the AI in this game is not always uh, switched on, and this is one of those occasions. So having the ability to 
move your head around like this, you know, you observe things, uh, environments in such an organic way. It really does uh, change the feel of locations um, and environments, especially especially the inside of ships, and especially like really affects the the feeling of operating a turret. When sitting in a turret with eye tracking enabled, you get much more of a sense of being in a compartment of the ship, rather than just being a kind of gun on a gimbal. You really can immerse yourself in the space that you occupy, and it's actually made manning turrets a lot more enjoyable for me. All of the environments benefit from this feeling really. I used to use VR a lot in Elite Dangerous back in the old days, and while that was incredibly immersive, it was also kind of inconvenient. Headsets get uncomfortable over time, and you can't see your keyboard or surroundings in the real world. The Toby Eye Track offers a lot of the benefits of VR, but in a really comfortable and convenient package. You don't need anything extra attached to your head, for example, like you do with Track IR. You just attach the device to your monitor using the supplied magnetic strips, and you are good to go. Some of the common questions that I get about the Toby Eye Tracker include whether you can use this device with glasses. Well, I wear glasses myself and as far as I can tell, it has never affected the performance of the device or the tracking. So I'd say you're pretty good to go if you've seen any of the videos here on the channel. That is the quality of the tracking with glasses. Another is how easy the eye tracker is to get working once Toby software has been installed. In Star Citizen, it is really easy. So here we have the options for head tracking, uh, VoIP and head tracking tab here. I've got mine set to Toby um, and head tracking enabled is on. So this is like the first thing you'll set up. You can use the, the forward slash key on the numpad to toggle this on and off, but then um, you'll want it turned on to make sure that the Toby system will work. In my earlier videos with the Toby Eye Tracker, there was some jittering in some of the external shots, and that was my own fault because I didn't know that they were smoothing settings. You can apply smoothing to the tracking here, and I tend to go with about 15%, and I find that solves any jittering issues that I was having. We're near the top of this section, and this was something I was introduced to quite recently by Cyrus. Adding to the smoothing is really great for removing jitter, Below that then we've got all of the um, enable, disable features. And then below that then we've got the actual settings for the, the sensitivities and dead zones. Within Star Citizen settings here, you also have sliders for sensitivity and dead zone across all aspects of the tracking. You can assign separate settings for vehicles and on foot even. So if you want the tracking to be more pronounced during piloting a ship, for example, you can do that. You can also set a balance between head tracking and eye tracking. I've always typically gone with head tracking alone. I've just found that to be the most intuitive. But if your own personal tastes may be different, Toby has got you covered. Though there is a recent development by Toby called Camera Boost that I think finds a really awesome sweet spot between head tracking and eye tracking, and it does this in a really interesting way. To demonstrate this, I'm going to turn on the Toby Ghost so you can see exactly where I am looking at the screen in real time. The Toby Ghost is basically an overlay that shows where my gaze is focused at any one moment. So that little circle you see, that is actually where my eyes are looking at the screen right now. So the camera boost option increases head tracking sensitivity in the direction that your eyes are looking. If I am looking to the right and then I turn my head to the right, I'll get a lot more movement in game than if I was say looking straight forward and turned my head to the right. As a counter example, I am looking right and turning my head to the left here and I only get a little movement. But if I look to the left and also turn my head to the left, I get a lot more movement. There are a ton of situations where this would be really useful. Obviously, when you are turning your head to control the in-game view, you still need to be looking at your monitor to see what's going on. And while I have never found it uncomfortable to find a sensitivity level that allows both fine movements for looking ahead and wide angle control for looking way behind me while still being able to see the screen, having extra influence over the difference between the small movements as you're looking forward and the big swing movements as you are looking around you or above you or behind you will make controlling the view a whole lot easier even than it has been already. Definitely a cool addition to the control options. 
So there you have it, the Tobia Trekker 5 has been an incredible addition to my Star Citizen setup at home and as I said at the beginning of the video, I honestly couldn't imagine playing without it now. If you are interested in picking up an eye tracker for yourself, we have a discount link in the description of the video below or go to www.toby.gg forward slash citizen kate toby 23 for a 20% discount off the regular price. There is also a link to enter a sweepstake that Toby are running. Good luck to everyone on that sweepstake. Stake. and of course I want to thank Toby for sponsoring the channel and for their dedication to making excellent products. Thank you. I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our very generous patrons that you can see on screen right now. These very generous people keep the channel going with their support and I just want to thank each and every one of them for choosing to support the channel. Thank you. We'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon.